If stimulants have left you or your child feeling wired, irritable, or just not quite themselves, there's another option that's often overlooked. It's called guanfacine ER, or extended release, also known by the brand name Intuniv. Unlike Adderall, or Ritalin, or Concerta, this medication is not a stimulant. That means no crashes, no appetite suppression, no insomnia. In fact, it often improves sleep. And here's something many people don't realize. Guanfacine ER can also be a powerful add-on to stimulant treatment. It works 24 hours a day, doesn't interfere with stimulant medications, and can help smooth out symptoms, not just while the stimulant medication is active for ADHD, but even after the stimulant wears off. In many cases, it even lets us reduce the stimulant dose, which helps minimize side effects like the appetite loss, the insomnia, or the emotional swings that stimulants can sometimes bring on. In this video, I'll walk you through what guampacine ER actually does, how it helps, what side effects to watch for, and of course, I'll share my own take based on clinical experience and the latest research. I'm Dr. David Danish, a double board certified psychiatrist specializing in treating ADHD. So what exactly is guanfacine ER supposed to do? Guanfacine is FDA approved to treat ADHD in children and adolescents ages six to 17. It works on the prefrontal cortex, the command center for attention, impulse control, and emotion regulation. Unlike stimulants that boost dopamine and norepinephrine, guanfacine binds to receptors called alpha-2A adrenergic receptors. That's a big term. This helps calm overactive brain circuits, leading to improved emotion regulation, less impulsivity, and fewer outbursts. It's especially useful in kids with anxiety, sleep issues, or co-occurring tic disorders. In fact, it's one of the few medications that can treat both ADHD and Tourette's at the same time. It's also gaining traction for off-label use in adults for a variety of reasons. It's been used for years to help adults with ADHD, even though that is off-label because of them being over 18. But it's also being increasingly used in adults who may have brain fog from long COVID, as well as adults who may have altered thinking, altered focus from a previous traumatic brain injury. Okay, an important myth I want to address today as well. Does guanfacine only work for hyperactivity but not for actual inattention? Actually, no, that's a huge myth. Multiple clinical trials have found that guanfacine ER is very effective for all three core symptom domains of ADHD, inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. A 2019 pooled analysis of four large placebo-controlled trials found that guanfacine ER improved both inattentive and hyperactive impulsive symptoms, with effect sizes ranging from 0.5 for inattention to 0.67 for hyperactivity and impulsivity. Another study confirmed this, showing that guanfacine was more effective than placebo in both the predominantly inattentive type and the combined type of ADHD. So yes, it might be slightly more effective for hyperactivity and impulsivity, but its benefits for inattention are real and clinically meaningful. That 0.5 effect size I mentioned earlier, that's stronger than antidepressants are when treating depression. In the real world, I use Intuniv as a standalone, but I more commonly use it as an add-on medication to stimulants. Again, helping me have a lower dose needed of that stimulant, but also helping for when that stimulant wears off later in the day, there's still something on board to help with the ADHD symptoms. Let's talk honestly about side effects because no medication is perfect. Common early side effects include daytime sleepiness or fatigue, dizziness or lightheadedness, headaches, stomach aches, mild nausea. Some kids can get irritable, which is the opposite of our goal here. Dry mouth is not uncommon and constipation can occur. A lot of these side effects are dose related and do fade over time. I always start low at one milligram doses and I always start at nighttime in case it is too sedating, which it is for some. More serious but less common side effects include low blood pressure, a slowed heart rate, and those can lead to fainting as well as extreme dizziness. 
We always monitor vital signs when starting or adjusting the dose. And I actually often recommend that parents get an at-home blood pressure cuff, which can check blood pressure and heart rate anytime a dose is changed. This works a lot better than waiting for in-person appointments where sometimes heart rate and blood pressure are simply off because of anxiety or other factors. Also a reminder, any medicine for ADHD, including guanfacine, doesn't work for everything. Guanfacine helps with attention, impulsivity, and emotion regulation, but not time management, motivation, or planning. That's where executive function coaching still plays a critical role for kids and adults with ADHD. Here's how I think about guanfacine ER. It's one of those quiet, steady, yet effective tools in my field. It doesn't grab the headlines. It doesn't make people say, oh my gosh, my eyes are open to see what it's like what others feel who don't have ADHD. That's what some stimulants can do. Guanfacine is much more subtle than that, yet powerful. And the early promises in long COVID brain fog is genuinely exciting. I tend to use it quite a bit there and have seen vast and quick results. I also like it in some of my patients who are still very hyper despite being on higher stimulant doses. I also like it in my patients who have co-occurring tic disorders or those with insomnia. For my patients who don't tolerate stimulants well because of either feeling more anxious or more edgy or having too much of a drop in appetite, then this is a good fallback as well. I tend to avoid it in patients who of course already have low blood pressure because this one will lower blood pressure as a potential side effect. I usually start at one milligram nightly and go up by one milligram increments every seven days to a goal dose of anywhere between three and five, three and six milligrams, depending on the patient's symptoms, their weight, their blood pressure. The maximum dose is seven milligrams. I usually dose it at night, but it can be moved to morning if it's not too sedating. And if you feel like the first 12 hours on it are a little bit more efficacious, which I've seen, and you need that to work during the day, not at night. If you're considering guampacine extend release, whether it on its own or as an add-on, don't stop here. Head to the Mind Vault at drdaviddanish.com for a complete breakdown on the pros, cons, and my take on guanfacine extended release. And if executive functioning, not just those in the moment ADHD symptoms, is a big challenge for you or your child, we can help with that too. Visit drdaviddanish.com, executive function coaching, link is in the description, to learn more about our hand-selected physician-supervised coaching program, it's incredible and I wish I had it for myself growing up. Thanks for watching and as always, stay curious, stay grounded, and please stay hopeful.